Played of our national anthem performed by our MRH High School Band, led by Mr. Vince Rapini. Please be seated. Parents and guardians, friends and family, Board of Education, fellow students, most importantly about to be graduates, welcome to the class of 2022 commencement ceremony. At this point, I would like to introduce the distinguished guests who are here this evening. I ask that they please stand to be recognized. 
High School Assistant Principal, Dr. Samantha Smith. Board of Education Director, Katie Kaufman. Mayor of the City of Maplewood, Nikailan Knapper. Board of Education President, Brandy Herndon Miller. Superintendent of MRH Schools, Dr. Bonita Jamison. Assistant Superintendent of MRH Schools, Roxana Meacham. Board of Education Secretary, Maria Langston. Deputy Mayor of Richmond Heights, Lisa Eppert. Board of Education Treasurer, Rachel Goldsman. Board of Education Vice President, Amber Withicom. Board of Education Director, and happy birthday to Linda Robinson. Tonight's special guest speaker, Mr. Anthony Myers. And I am the high school principal, Kevin Grower. Now it's my privilege to introduce the MRH Choir, led by Mrs. Michelle Harry, as they sing Wanting Memories by Yesay M. Barnwell. I call them up right now.
Thank you, MRH Concert Choir. You can be seated. At this moment, it is my pleasure to introduce the MRH High School Student Council President, Ms. Emma Court, to address the audience and her classmates. Thank you, Dr. Garr, for that introduction. Good evening, class of 2022, family, friends, loved ones, and staff, and thank you for coming to this incredibly important day in all of our lives. Class of 2022, we have made it to the moment we've all been dreaming about since we were little kids. And while yes, there have been moments of, man, I can't wait to graduate, or wait, Mr. Ganey, how many more days do we have left again? We tend to forget about how we got here and who helped us get to this moment. To the teachers, coaches, administrators, staff, and anyone and everyone in between, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your dedication, love, and passion for what you do. Thank you for the constant love and support these past four years, and thank you for your drive to make this school a better place on a daily basis for everyone. Now, it was exactly one week ago today that the class of 2022 walked the Maplewood Richmond Heights High School halls for the very last time as high schoolers. Now, this year, of course, has been filled with many lasts. Our last home game against our rivals, the Brentwood Eagles, our last homecoming, and our last prom. And the last time Cole winning would show up on Zoom in a full-blown Spider-Man costume. And while, yes, we have experienced many sad lasts throughout this year, we cannot forget about our many exciting firsts while here in high school. Our first class with the one and the only Dr. Welker, our first A we ever got on a test, or the very first time Cole Winning showed up on Zoom in a Spider-Man costume. Now as we leave this chapter of our lives behind and enter a brand new one, we will experience many new and slightly terrifying firsts. Our first roommate, our first job offer, or even our first degree. These firsts can be overwhelming at times and yes, a little nerve wracking, but remember to always handle these firsts with nothing but grace and dignity and always be true to yourself. Be kind in anything and everything you do, and never forget that while yes, these first can be scary, you never know where they might lead you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and absolute privilege of presenting to you for the very first time, the MRH class of 2022 co-salutatorian, Catherine Barron. Thank you, Emma. Good evening. Today I'm reminded of a story my parents often tell. 18 years ago, when I arrived home from the hospital as a newborn, my sister, who was three at the time, asked my mom if she could take me out to the curb with the trash. <laughs> COVID attempted to trash our high school experience. Our sports seasons were canceled, we were isolated from friends, and classes were held on Zoom. Though, as Maya Angelou once said, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly, but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. I can't claim that COVID transformed us into butterflies. But we have become more patient, more understanding, and more resilient. Not many high school graduates have collectively faced a challenge as large as COVID. This shared obstacle molded us into better individuals. Upon our return to school, we were more grateful for our ability to attend in-person classes, as highlighted by Dr. Grauer's grace, growth, and gratitude mantra. In the coming years, we may be challenged by new classes, new friends, and new jobs. Despite how difficult these new challenges may be, we should be confident in our ability to persevere, as we have shown we are capable in these last four years. I've witnessed many of you mature into individuals with a drive to succeed, and I'm excited to see what the class of 2022 will accomplish. For many of you, this is the most you've heard me talk in the past 13 years. So I will end here by thanking our parents and teachers. All of you had a tremendous impact on the individuals we are today. And we would not be here without your support. Thank you.
And now, I'd like to introduce the class of 2022 co-salutatorium, Jacob Cummings, to address the audience. Thank you, Captain. Welcome parents and guardians. Welcome parents and guardians, family and friends, faculty and distinguished guests. I'm grateful to be to have you here today, and I'm sure that I speak for the other graduates as well. I'm thankful for you, our family and friends, who continue to show up for us and put your support on display. I'm thankful for the teachers and MRH staff who have guided us through school transitions during the recent years of our lives. I'm thankful for any alumni or distinguished guests who are here today as well, because it shows how important this MRH community has continued to be for you. <laughs> Lastly, I want to specifically mention my thankfulness for Dr. Grauer. He has been an integral part of our high school experience and has improved it for me and us in so many countless ways. So thank you. My name is Jacob Cummings. I'm grateful to speak to you today, although I'm a little nervous. This speech will be followed up by Jackson's, who is both a member of the mock trial team and speech and debate. I am neither. <laughs> Either way, I hope that each of you finds something for yourself in my remarks. At the beginning of this year, I decided that my senior quote had to be great. I selected one of my favorites, I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> said, in 19, said by 1970s rocker Warren Zevon, it fit the bill. It would be a phrase that encapsulated the energy and fun of my senior experience. It was going to be incredible. While my senior year was fun, I sound foolish to myself now. This senior year was the first time in three when we had to go to school full time for the entire year. Never in all my life have I ever wanted to sleep more. In fact, my senior quote should have been, I'd sleep last period, this period, and next period. I'm sure that I would have too if I had been confident that I would wake up unharmed after sleeping in Miss Carmen's third period calculus class. Regardless of all of this, I made it through. Class of 2022, we all made it through. It didn't matter how bored, how fatigued, or how unfocused we were. We are here today, which moves me to a decidedly more appropriate quote. Happiness is determined more by one's state of mind than by external events. The Dalai Lama said that, so I figure it must be true. We, as a class, have battled against those external events all throughout high school. We had a year taken away from us by the pandemic, where we missed each other and our friends more than ever. We've also had internal challenges. We shared in the frustrations of classes, being swamped with work before finals, trying not to die after having to do another chemistry in my life assignment, or having to learn about Hamlet at the end of the year when focus was impossible. <laughs> Finally, we each have our own unique stresses of everyday life that are not necessarily known to others. All of those struggles are valid. All are difficult to face. What that quote from the Dalai Lama doesn't tell us is that maintaining a positive state of mind can often be easier said than done. It is hard to overcome bar barriers of anger, of sadness, or of loneliness when they spring upon us, to flip a switch in our minds and change how we're thinking. However hard that has been for you, you've done it yourselves and you've succeeded. I know this because we're all still here. We've overcome these external events in our own ways and have grown to be more confident and resilient people. We discovered new talents and hobbies during the pandemic. We decided that it would finally work out, that we would acquire an obscene number of houseplants, or that we would buy a sourdough starter and bake an ungodly amount of bread, just like Mr. Dixon. <laughs> Back in school, in person, we found more sources of joy in our lives. For me, that was being a part of the cross country and track teams. By bonding with other people through the difficulties we faced at practice every day after school. I spent time with my friends and family, the people I love. By pursuing moments that were important to me, 
I intermingled triumphs with these difficult times. And I know that you all have too. This trend of self-exploration and expression, to me, characterizes a state of mind that anyone would envy. I'm confident that we, as a class, will continue to find happiness after high school. We all have futures and careers ahead of us, paths so that we can continue to live joyfully. If you haven't found that yet, I both hope that you do and am confident that you will. After all, as we learned in elementary school, it's who we are and what we do, remember? I'm grateful to have gotten to spend this time with you, and I sincerely wish unending happiness to each of you. Thank you. Now, please join me in welcoming MRH Superintendent, Dr. Benita Jamison. Thank you for your introduction, Jacob. Members of the Board of Education, administration, distinguished members of MRH faculty, senior class officers, family, friends, and most importantly, the esteemed graduating class of 2022. Today I look out on so many unique faces, some smiling, some with no affect at all, and others who are thinking, come on, Dr. J, get to it. However, I want to take a moment to encourage us all to indulge in this very moment. Students, look at your classmates. I see a couple people doing it, thank you. <laughs> Families, look at your graduates. With senseless deaths resulting from gun violence in the US, we must embrace the fact that we are here and the 19 students and two teachers in Uvalde, Texas won't be offered this opportunity. At this time, let us take a moment of silence for the 21 victims who lost their lives in the Uvalde school shooting. Thank you. Now this part of my address uh, will require some audience participation. So yes, I do expect you to participate. I know school is technically concluded and for some of us have concluded many moons ago. So hand raising, some choral responses, much appreciated. So let's practice. How many of you have read The Three Little Pigs? All right. Don't be shy, families chime in. The Three Little Pigs basically starts with pigs building houses. The first pig built a house out of? Straw. Straw. Awesome. The second pig bit their house out of? Thank you. And the third pig built their house out of? Thank you, Ed, this brick is very heavy. The wolf knocks on the door and says, thank you, little pig, little pig, let me in. And the pig says, not on the hair of my chinny chin chin. The wolf then says, then I'll I'm certain that you did not know at that time that one of your favorite fairy tales included life lessons. So what lessons were we to learn? The first lesson is to prioritize. The first two pigs did not see the importance of building their homes properly and preferred to dance and play. While I am strongly encourage you to play, face it, the pandemic has limited your ability to do so. However, your ability to prioritize will guide you in your life's decisions and keep you on track. So yes, prioritize not staying out late if you have to work or have class the next morning. Your priorities will help you identify what's truly needed in life versus what someone else feels is important. Self-care is a thing. Yes, it is a thing. And it includes your physical and mental health. Yes, your physical and mental health matter. The second lesson is to plan strategically. We can all argue that all three pigs created a plan for the future. However, the first two pigs' plans were unsustainable. 
The third pig planned for the future scenario, the big bad wolf. Planning strategically from my perspective means you envisioning what you want for your future and what's important for you. This man means create your plan. Yes, your plan. Not your mother's, not your father's, not your grandparents, your older brothers or sisters, but yours. Set your actions in motion. Filter the unimportant opportunities. Hold yourself accountable. Unfortunately, your teachers and your family members can't do that for you any longer. The last lesson you were to learn is knowing when to quit. The wolf pursued the three pigs even though he wore himself out trying to blow down the house made of bricks. He should have quit knowing when to quit, but he continued his pursuit and his pursuit led him to hot water, literally. Knowing when to quit, as it turns out, before things go to a place that you can't recover from is a tough but ultimately important skill that you must learn. Knowing when to quit also forces you to self-assess. I know that you have spent the last four years of high school being told you must persevere, demonstrate grit. However, being unable to let go of cherished but unachievable goals can also impact your mental and physical health. So always weigh the potential of continuing to learn and develop against cost, time, and the dangers resulting from not quitting. While we all know, depending on the version that you read, how the three little pigs ended, I can't help but wonder how differently the ending would have been if the three little pigs would have pulled their resources and collaborated. Well, that's a different version of a fairy tale that has not yet been written. However, to the class of 2022, I wish you luck as you embark upon your very own fairy tale that we adults call life. Let the lessons learned from the three little pigs be a reminder to prioritize, to plan strategically, and know when to quit. With the knowledge you've gained in school and from your families, coupled with the jewels learned from the three little pigs, I am confident you will find success and happiness wherever your fairy tale leads you toward college or into the workforce. Again, congratulations. You made it through some tough times over the past few years. And remember, as Alan Alexander Milnes says, you are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jameson. It's now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker tonight, Mr. Anthony Myers. Anthony has served in various leadership executive roles over his career, has more than 20 years of engaging corporate, educational, nonprofit, and faith-based organizations towards sustainability and overall excellence. He leverages his vision for collective engagement to broker relationships that cross cultural, racial, socioeconomic, and geographical lines to help build better organizations and vibrant communities. Anthony holds a bachelor's degree from St. Augustine's College in Criminal Justice and a master's from Jacksonville State in Counseling Education. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Anthony Myers. Thank you very much. Some of you knew you were graduating. Some of you hoped you were graduating. Some of you prayed that you were graduating, and some of you are still wondering if you will graduate. <laughs> Good evening. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, to Dr. Jameson, board chair, entire school board, honored dignitaries, faculty, staff, coaches, especially the family and friends. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Very graduate. In a few minutes, they're going to cheer for you. But right now, I want you to turn around and cheer for them because they prayed for you when you didn't know they were praying for you, hoped for you, cried for you, pushed you, aggravated you, yelled at you to get you. No, stand up. Right, there we go. I, there you go. There you go. Some of y'all got a cheering section. That's good. Y'all can have a seat. You know, it's wonderful to celebrate this occasion that we reminisce and then look to the future. Look at the accomplishments as we celebrate this for the aspiring minds, these 106 aspiring minds. 
My remarks tonight are not geared towards parents or friends or family or faculty. They're geared towards you, the graduates. Because in a few moments, you will be a graduate. Let that sink in for a second. You've completed a, a journey on this academic path. You know, as spring turns to summer all across this nation, people are putting on their hats and gowns, preparing for graduation. For some, it's a tradition. For others, you're the first in your family. But through the culmination of this career that you've had in academics, you made it. Don't let anybody take that from you. You really have achieved something. So let's look back a little bit. I wondered, what do I tell the class of 2022 who's endured so much? Let's look at this. Here's what you've endured. Action against gun control, a serial killer in California, wildfires in California, royal wedding, school shootings, winter Olympics, midterm elections that break history, and Supreme Court confirming hearings. And that was just your freshman year. Let's go, let's see, there was Brexit, Amazon, the company, and the burning in Brazil. Impeachment trial, the death of Kobe and Gigi Bryant and 12 others in a horrible uh, helicopter crash. The emergence of COVID-19, the killing of George Floyd, social unrest, school shootings, quarantines, online school, isolation, masks on or off, vaccine, yes or no, a very loud election, a second vaccine shot, a booster shot, social unrest again, storming the Capitol, boosters, back to class, and the stress of senior year, and then finally, graduation. The people wonder why you might be tired. But through it all, you endured. Through it all, you didn't give up. Through it all, you made it. You didn't just survive, you thrived, you overcame. You made it happen regardless. A few weeks ago, I sent out a survey, a blind survey to, to senior class, and they answered the questions. And it, if you listen to society, they will tell you that maybe these senior classes coming out now aren't thinking about anything but themselves. They're super consumed with themselves and not the world. But this is what I found out about this class. Here's how they answer some of these questions. What was the most challenging thing in your senior year? Balancing life and academic struggles. They were focused. Most influential people, Elon Musk, God, parents, Ms. Wags and Mr. Wynn, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Important qualities of a friend, loyalty, respect, trustworthiness. I couldn't do without my family, friends, God, phone, and food. <laughs> not in that order. My dream for the world, peace, healthier planet, hopeful, and kinder. Most grateful for my family and friends, and the word that describes graduation. Finally, freedom. <laughs> so let you know that this class thinks more about others than themselves. That what the world talks about you is wrong, it's incomplete, it's inaccurate. Because what you see and what you do represents well here. I want to leave you with something today because people will tell you, when you leave here, be successful. Successful is easy, successful is cheap. You want to be significant. You want to leave your mark in society. So when you go out, they say, where did you come from? Are there any more like you? So significance is where you ought to be going and you tune out the noise of social media, you tune out the noise of negative circumstances or, or, or anything else that would stop you. So what I'm gonna do, is I wanna give you four things to do and two words to live by and then I'm done. Four things to do two things to live by, and then I'm done. Number one, believe in yourself and what you can accomplish. Don't let anybody tell you you can't make it. Don't listen to them. I know they say you're young, you're inexperienced, you're not ready. Sometimes in your mind you gotta tell them to shut up, I can make this, I can do this. Because in 2019, two million individuals who were supposed to graduate did not graduate on time. There were 106 seniors, 106 graduated on time at this school. You ought to give yourselves a hand for that because you've beaten the odds. <laughs> Always celebrate yourself and what you're doing. If nobody else does it, make sure you're celebrating yourself. So believe in yourself and what you can accomplish. Number two, don't take no for an answer. Obstacles will come your way. An obstacle will be no, you know you can't do this. No, you're not ready. No, you're not supposed to. And in your mind, you have to say, yes, I can, yes, I will, and you can't stop me. There will always be deterrence in your life.
COVID was a deterrent. Sometimes life is a deterrent. You have to succeed anyway against all obstacles. I stood in the hallway and watched how this class interacted with each other. I went to the auditorium and just watched them interact. And here's what I want to tell you. Number three, don't do this alone. Don't do this alone. This graduating class, don't do this alone. Don't do it by yourself. See, life will try to tell you you're all alone. You're by yourself. You can't do this. But I tell you that you can't because life has this mountain in front of you. And you're going to try to climb this mountain by yourself, but don't do that. Tell the person next to you, where I go, you go. Tell them. And where you go, you better take me. See, because you shouldn't do this all by yourself. You, you know, enemies ought to be friends and friends ought to be partners. If there's a mountain, tell them to climb the mountain with me. With me. If it's why, tell them to go around it with me. If you need to, set, let's get a shovel and dig through this thing. But nothing should stop you. Don't do this alone. Society will pit you one against the other because you believe in this or that for politics or race or culture. You have to be above that. You are well educated. You have to be above that. You are articulate and well read. You have to be above that. But don't do this alone. Take somebody with you. You know, 10 years from now, when you come back for this class reunion, hopefully most of you will have maintained contact. And you can share the story, not just sitting here, but what you've done since. How you've changed life, how you've changed your circumstances, how you've changed this school, this city, this country, this world. Number four, never, ever, ever give up. Don't give in, don't give up, don't slow down for anybody. See, life will try to slow you down, make you stop, hinder your progress, but don't stop. See, sometimes you're gonna want a trophy or, or accolades and somebody's not gonna give it to you. Sometimes what you have to do is take your hand like this, your hand like this, and pat your own self on the back because nobody else will. But never ever give up. Strive to be great every single day. You know, the uh, past five summers I've been in Africa. And I think about young, educated individuals there. And their only hope, because they watch online individuals like you, and their hope is to be you. Because some of them don't have graduations like this. They're just lucky to, to, to survive to be 18. And they look at people like you and they say, I want to be just like you. You have a unique opportunity. Don't give up. When times get hard, as they will, don't give up. When people stand in your way, don't give up. Be determined. You know, some of you are stellar academically. You'll get to college or that next job, and you will find something that we've all found in life, failure. I've got a t-shirt I wear that says, failure's not an option. So failure's not an option. You never, ever give up. So that's four things I gave you. I gave you four things because I believe you can live by those right now. I believe you can do those right now, but there are two words you have to live by. And people sometimes want to leave a legacy, and legacy is good. A legacy is wonderful. But I think this class ought to be legendary. Ought to be bigger than just who you are, but collectively as a group, just be legendary, be kind, be humble, be grateful, be gracious, be forgiving. Be the one that when you walk in the room, they know you're there, when you leave, they miss you. That's what legendary is about. Don't let anybody tell you you can't make it. That you're not able. That this is not your time. That this is not your moment. This is your moment. This is your time. The class of 2022, you endured a lot. Some did not make it. And some won't make it, but you have. Don't take that for granted. Every day that you wake up is a new opportunity to be great. There are 1,440 minutes of every day. No more, no less. That's all each of us gets. How are you going to maximize your time, your effort, your life to transcend not just your school, but transcend your generation? Young people around the world are doing marvelous and mind-blowing things. Why can't that be you? Be hopeful, be loving, be kind, be gracious. But above all, be legendary. Thank you, Class 2022. I appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Myers. It's now my pleasure 
to invite to the stage the class of 2022 valedictorian Jackson Corcoran to address his classmates and the audience. After that introduction from Jacob, uh, I stand fully ready to disappoint. I'm sorry. But, hello. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jackson Corcoran, and if you don't know me very well, uh, one thing you should know about me is the best thing that happened to me today is that the Cardinals beat the Cubs. That should give you some idea of what I'm like. But, I've lived in Maplewood for 13 years. I moved in in uh, the middle of 2009, and soon after that, I enrolled in kindergarten here at the Amherst School District. I spent two years in that building over there, five years in the building down that way, and six, uh, shall we say, long years in that building right behind you. Through those years, I've gotten to know a great deal of, uh, of you sitting out in front of me today. Only 100 odd people in a class together for so long, you're bound to, you know? That length of time really accentuates the surrealism of what's happening right now. We're done. I don't think it's sunk in yet, and I don't know when it will, the fact that we are done with this and we're all moving on. I think, though, that some of you might be familiar with the phrase, peaked in high school. Uh, usually, people apply to someone who was maybe an athlete, had some mid-sized achievements in high school, can't move on from those achievements, and hasn't done much since they walked across the stage and got their diploma. You know, though, as I say that, I do realize I am ticking quite a few of those boxes already, so uh, pray for me. But the reason I bring this up is not to be a downer. Uh, it's because having known so many of you for a large portion of the last 13 years, I can say wholeheartedly that I don't believe that label is going to apply. Every one of you that I've gotten the pleasure of coming to know has some sort of ability or talent that I'm continually impressed by. I've gotten to know future designers, filmmakers, athletes, pilots, nurses, scientists, lawyers, and so much more. It is truly something else, the degree to which all of your proverbial ducks are set so neatly in their rows. You folks have peaks that will come far, far in the future. I'm incredibly excited for uh, future class reunions personally, where I'm certain that I'll feel deeply, deeply inadequate as I hear about the great things that you all are doing. Of course, all that is well off in the future. And as we stand here today, we are still, in truth, at the beginning. The road is out ahead of us. But on that road, there is one thing that I hope you all understand that has taken me far too long to grasp. This is that life is inevitably full of failure in some form or fashion. Sometimes it'll be spectacular, like when I gave my backpacking group a wrong turn and we ended up trudging through ankle-deep mud in a thunderstorm for about three hours. Sometimes it'll be in little things, like when I get all the way to school only to realize that my computer is sitting on my desk at home. Point being, you will fail, as I have. Probably a lot. And that's okay. Really, it's good. Succeeding at everything doesn't make you better. It just makes you stagnant. Failure lets you get better as you learn from your mistakes and grow. Don't be afraid of it. For example, in my freshman baseball season, I struck out looking with a runner on third against Brentwood, our hated rival, in districts to end our season. As far as failure goes, uh, that might be the big one. So, I stand up here as someone who has failed more often and more spectacularly can, than you can possibly imagine. But, this past season, I didn't strike out looking a single time. And now, I double check my maps before every fork in the road. And, I make sure that my computer is actually in my backpack. I've gotten better because of, not in spite of, my failures. So, if you take anything away from the speech, which might be a little unlikely, is that I'm dead certain that you folks have a lot ahead of you. But getting there might just be a little different than you thought. And that's okay, because if there's anyone, any group of people that I've come to know can, that can deal with it, it's you all. Coming to a close, which I'm sure might not be a moment too soon, I want to thank a few people. I want to thank my parents for pushing me to be the best man I can be. I am so grateful for you. I want to thank coaches Robertson and Webb, who believed in a scrawny, pimple-faced teenager when he didn't believe in himself. Thank you to Coach McCollum, who helped me say all these fancy words so good. <laughs> Thank you to the teachers and administration here, Drs. Grower, Smith, Payton, and King, who have all done a fantastic job over the last four years, providing us a unique and incredible academic experience. And most of all, thanks to you, 
the 100 people who I've spent so much time with, who in the end was really what made them so special. Good luck in life, y'all. You got this. Thank you, Jackson. It's my privilege now to present this graduating class of 2022 to the Board of Education. Distinguished MRH School Board, I certify that these students have fulfilled all the necessary requirements as outlined by the Missouri Department of Secondary Education to legally and rightfully obtain their high school diploma. This diploma, which they will receive shortly, can never be taken away from them. At this time, Assistant Principal Dr. Sam Smith will assist by announcing all diploma recipients. We invite the Board of Education President, Brandy Herndon Miller, Superintendent Bonita Jamison, and Mr. Castle, English teacher, to assist as well. Please be considerate of each graduate, allowing their names to be announced and heard by all. proud of all of you. Would our first row please stand? <laughs>
Victoria Elizabeth Chandler. Jack Clark. Daniel Clausen. Jackson Corcoran. Emma K. Court. with us tonight. Minnie Durham. Blake William Evans. Michael Gardner. Noah Garland. Clarice Gabonio. Angelise Rachel Brady Liska.
Grace Howland. Abir Herdeen. Alexander Ivanov. Nathan Jansen. Phoebe Jenkins. Anaya Jones. Emerson Jones. Blake 
Morris. Keo Odi. Henry Roman Orahood. Michelle Suzanne Ryan. <laughs> Elijah Schwatka. Summit. 
Leslie Renee Taylor. Xavier Zachariah Thomas. Jordan Yuli. <laughs> Nick Vitali. Deanna Williams. We're going to wait a minute until they all get their photo, then we'll get going. So friends and family, uh, graduates, you can, you can sit down. As we come to the end of the ceremony, a couple of logistics. Uh, we ask that as we process out, we allow the students and the staff to process out the main stairwell well, here, here in the middle. Uh, graduates will enter the school and they will exit out our research and design center in the back parking lot. Families, after all students have exited, feel free to make your way to the parking lot to see them. And of course, we only have one exit due to construction, and that is the Martini exit. But please take your time, and your graduates will meet you in the back of the school. Okay, would all graduates now please stand?
it gives me great pleasure to announce the MRH High School class of 2022 is formally graduated from Maple to Richmond Heights High School. Students, you can toss your caps now if you want. Congratulations to the class of 2022.